Hey guys, I'm Brian. Welcome to your PFC Training Minute. This is an interesting one for us. This is Action versus Reaction Revisited. One of our uh, most popular and well-received videos that we ever put on YouTube involved two participants standing side by side on a live fire range wherein one was the good guy and one was the bad guy. And it was addressing a trend we were seeing in law enforcement where law enforcement officers were giving directives to a bad guy who had a gun down by his side. And they would tell him 20, 30, 40, 50 times to drop the gun. And we were trying to impart some science to the, uh, the end user that that bad guy, because he's the actor, there will be a delay for the reactor, the good guy, the officer, to come up on target and to effectively get rounds off. That bad guy is capable of getting his gun up and online and getting rounds off before the good guy can. In the demonstration that we had performed that previous video, the bad guy was successful in firing first in every single different scenario. So we're going to revisit the drill. It's been enough time, but we're going to add a couple of twists to this. Instead of firing side by side with live fire on paper, where we're peripherally seeing that gun come up online, we're going to do this face to face with non-lethal training ammunition. In this case in particular, we're going to do it where Trav is playing the role of the officer and Doug is playing the role of the bad guy. UTMs being fired face to face. So the variables and the variations of this drill that we're gonna perform are, variation number one, bad guy, gun down by his side, finger on the trigger. Good guy, weapon at a depressed muzzle angle with his finger off the trigger. Once the bad guy moves and goes for it, the good guy is cleared to engage. We'll see whose gun goes off first. Second variation is going to be our good guy up on target this time, gun leveled off, but nonetheless still maintaining trigger finger discipline, finger off the trigger, we'll see who fires first. Next variation, good guy, up on target, finger on the trigger. That in theory should speed up his reaction time and help him be a little bit quicker. We'll see what the results on this look like. And our final variation is we're going to add a little bit of an adrenaline dump or physical exertion. Trav will be playing the officer who is responding on foot. He's going to have a minimum of about a 50-yard run as he comes into the play box. And when he does, he'll begin giving ver verbal commands. And we'll see how that positively or negatively affects his reaction time. Let's give it a try. Okay, so we're set up for our first exercise here. Again, Travis, officer over in blue. He is at a depressed muzzle orientation. He's got his finger off the trigger because he's been properly trained. And Doug over here is our adversary. You can see he's got that muzzle pointed all the way at the ground. But of course, horrible trigger finger discipline. He's got his finger on the trigger. Once, gun, once Doug initiates the raising of that muzzle, it's going to be on. We'll see who reacts first. You're hot. Time for variation two. We saw that our adversary did get his round off first on that last drill. Bad guy's doing the same thing, weapon pointed towards the ground, finger on the trigger. Our good guy this time has decided to bring his weapon up a little bit higher. So he's now got the gun up in his visual plane. He truly has a sight picture. Finger is, in fact, still off of the trigger. Let's see how this one plays out. And you're hot. Drop the gun. 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 Drop that gun. Drop the gun. Drop the gun. So we can clearly see we're now two repetitions in, and on both of these repetitions, our adversary was capable of getting a fully depressed muzzle all the way up and on target. Now we're going to tip the scales even further. Our officer is going to begin this one, sights on target, finger on trigger. He's basically got everything done except for his brain sending the message to that trigger finger to finish the movement and press that trigger all the way to the rear. Adversary still at that disadvantage with the weapon pointed all the way at the ground with his finger on the trigger. We're gonna see whose gun goes off first. Both shooters ready? Ready, yes sir. Travis, aim in, finger on trigger, and you're hot. Drop the gun, drop that gun, drop the 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 gun. So you can now see that even in that scenario right there where the officer had every single advantage set up for them to win and to be fast, up on target, sight picture, finger on trigger, ready to take and fire, 
that that adversary who has to do a full 90 degree movement of that gun and come up on target was still able to get his shot off first. We know that's not a high quality shot. We know it's not beautiful or well aimed, but this just shows the biomechanics, the biology of action versus reaction. For our last demonstration we're gonna do here, we're gonna put Travis out by the gate. We're gonna give him a little bit of a run. He's gonna get his adrenaline up as he executes that 50 yard run. He comes in, he'll confront Doug in here inside the courtyard and from there begin giving vertical commands and we'll see how that positively or negatively affects their action versus reaction. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop it! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! So what did we learn or Probably a more apt way to phrase it would be, what did we relearn? We relearned exactly what we learned last time, which is that action is going to crush reaction. And something we were just discussing a moment ago is that in this outcome, this scenario, Travis knows that it's going to be a resultant shoot scenario. That actually helps his reaction time. He knows that it's going to go lethal, and that allows him to speed up that much more. What's the message that we're trying to send here? Are we trying to say that if we see a person and they're armed with a firearm that we're going to engage first? That's not what we're saying. We're saying we need to be conscious of what your body is capable of. There are biological thresholds and what he is capable of. Numbers are going to help you. Angles are going to help you. Distance is going to help you. Tools. We like to say that distance favors the trained and the equipped. You're better trained. You're better equipped. Use as much as you possibly can to your advantage. But in a standoff with a person who's got a firearm aimed at the ground and you're up and on trigger, despite all of your training and all your skills, you still might get beat in the action versus reaction race. Be safe.